In this video, I'd like to talk about the topic of the two versions of the Ten Commandments in the Bible. Few people are aware of that. Few Christians are aware of that. Few Christians are aware of the fact that the original of the Bible was not written in English language. And few Christians are aware of the fact that the two versions of the Ten Commandments, one in Exodus 28 to 11 and the other one in Deuteronomy 5, 12 to 15, <coughs> that's the fourth commandment. But in any case, the two versions are to be found in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5. So I was saying that few Christians are aware that there are two versions and um, some even Christian scholars admit that one of the versions is not actually 10 but 14 or more commandments. Now, the I want to talk specifically about the fourth commandment. And there's something that is really doesn't make sense to me, does make logic. And that is that first, to provide the context and the differences in the fourth commandment, the justification for keeping the Sabbath in Exodus 20, 8 to 11 is that remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy six days you shall labor and do your work but the seventh is a sabbath to the lord your god you shall not do any work blah 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 why because in six days the lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and all that is in them but he rested on the seventh day therefore the lord blessed the sabbath day and made it holy that is the first version of, of the fourth commandment and part of the Ten Commandments of the Bible in Exodus. And the second version gives a reason why the Israelites and by extension every believer should keep the Sabbath day is that remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. So there are two different reasons, two different justifications as to why one believer, one Christian should keep the Sabbath day. Now, first, I'd like to talk about the fact that this fourth commandment annihilates the attribute, one of the attributes of God, namely his omnipotence because it admits clearly that God gets tired and he needs rest he needs to rest so if somebody is omnipotent it's impossible that he would need rest and here it clearly states that God needed got so tired that he needed to rest on the seventh day. And also he blessed the seventh day. He blessed the day on which God rested. In other words, he blessed the day on which he did nothing. It makes little sense to me, 
or I should say it doesn't make sense because God is supposed to have done wonderful, indescribably beautiful and wonderful things. He created the universe, the heavens, the earth, everything in, in the six days, but he didn't bless his work. But he blessed the day on which he did nothing. Nothing was created. Nothing was done. And so he commands his people to observe the day on which he did nothing. God, he did nothing. And therefore, by extension, they should not do anything of this day. But the mo more important issue that bothers me and that I want to talk about is the following. It says, Six days you shall labor and do your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, etc., etc. Why would all the Christians take half of that commandment as optional, as not obligatory, namely the first part, but the second one as mandatory and as obligatory. It doesn't make sense. And if, as most Christians hold and most Bible scholars hold and state that the Ten Commandments is like a monolith, it's a one thing. You take half of the Ten Commandments as optional, which means one twentieth. And so you decide that one twentieth is optional for you, but the rest, nineteen twentieth, are obligatory. Because for most, most Christians, the Ten Commandments, having been written by the finger of God, the only thing in the Bible written by the finger of God, which I don't, th I think it's totally stupidity, because it is written that it has been written by the the finger of God, but nobody can prove that. Nobody, there's no evidence of that. There's no proof of that. Absolutely, nowhere. Somebody wrote somewhere that God had written something on some stones with his finger. In any case, why would you take this one twentieth of the Ten Commandments and think, believe, and act as if it's optional, whereas it is obligatory and is not subject to interpretation? Ask Bible scholars, Bible apologists, Christian apologists, they will all tell you the Ten Commandments are not subject to interpretations. They are to be taken literally. They are still valid. They are still to be observed. If they are still to be observed, and if the Ten Commandments are one unit, one whole, a monolith, this one part of the fourth commandment also constitutes part of the whole and it's obligatory and it's not subject to inter interpretation and therefore by way of logic and by a conclusion based on reasonable deduction it logically follows that you being a christian and if you want to be saved you must labor in other words you must work six days per week less than six days you are committing a sin a sin that can send you in hell i want you if you're a christian if you're a believer if you think you're a christian if you think you're a believer i want you to reflect and meditate and think about this because the same verb 
is used in the other nine commandments. It's the same verb, though thou shall, but that's in English. Old English. In other words, you must. Six days you must labor and do all your work. Six days you must work, but on the seventh day you must not work. And so, if you work less than six days a week, you are violating the Ten Commandments, you are violating the Fourth Commandment, you are taking away all the blessings of God on you, and um, you are destined to hell. And this is according to the Holy Scriptures. This is according to the Bible. This is not my own interpretation. It's the Bible that states and that admits that. And the Bible states and admits that in a very clear and unequivocal language. So um, think about it.